वेलकम अगेन आई एम आलोक श्रीवास्तव एंड इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न थ्री वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग्स वन इज हाउ कैन आई रिमूव ओल्ड फाइल्स फ्रॉम 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 रिमोट सर्वर्स प्रज्यूम यू गोट हंड्रेड ऑफ सर्वर्स एंड यू वॉन्ट सम ओल्ड फाइल्स टू बी रिमूव माइट बी विच आर से फिफ्टीन डेज ओल्ड और हैव सम स्पेसिफिक साइज और यूर employees are playing smart what they had done they had copied the movies on the server and had changed the extension to txt now if you find with the dot mov extension or mp4 or whatever you might not be able to find them but you know that we don't have any anything above say 500 mb in my environment so if there is a file greater than 500 mb the chances are that it is of no use or chances are that it may be a movie or something like that so puppet has got a very interesting resource type which is tidy t i d y let me give you a simple example so suppose i create a file here clean up dot pp and i write tidy and then the path which you want to search right and then say age whatever say one day which are okay let me first go and see my temp so if i go to temp i'll see certain files here because we have just created the machine so i've got some files which are were created on 30th of may okay so let's uh, do that remove all the files which are more than one day old and some specific size though i i don't have a big size here but fine so i open this up age one day you can specify it in days week i'll give you some examples if you want to specify in size you can specify in size also size say say 50 mb and recurse to recurse to that means include the sub directories as well a very simple so tidy resource type the path where you want to search your age and size so you can have time uh, like specify the age in seconds minutes hour days so if i want to i just like comment it out so i can write it like this that age can be say 1 hour or i can say age can be say in seconds say 30 seconds something like that this or 20 seconds so you can specify the age in minutes hour days or weeks or say one week 1w like this or days also which i had specified so let's check it out if i go back and first let's take a look at the temp okay i've got these files here some files or were have the time stamp of 30th of may so if i run it let me first check puppet parser validate cleanup and i give here puppet apply cleanup let me see what tidy does oh let's check it out if you see here it hadn't worked i suppose let me check it again tidy resource type go to temp age size 50 mb recurse true okay let me run it again and see what is happening up what are, what are the errors so tidying eight files it has removed certain files here so this is a dependency so it's not removing these files no problem but certainly it would have it has removed certain files yes 
I can see it. If you see, I've got these files, my swap, and I go on top before I had run this. So these file system files are not available. I should have used the word count or let me create a big file and then do it so that it will be much more clearer to us. So I create a file of say 50 MB dd dev 0 of temp big file dot txt base sector is equal to 1 mb count say 100 so i'm creating a 100 mb file here inside temp big file so it should be removed because the condition that i'm giving is size is greater than 50 mb so if i run it puppet apply cleanup and i nine files tidying nine files see here big file dot txt is removed so it's working properly so in this manner you will be able to i cannot find the my file sorry big file so in this manner you will be able to remove or clean up your remote machines using the tidy resource type another is uh, we have got a host resource file we know the importance of the dns the DNS is used to map your name to the IPs and vice versa. But might be uh, you don't have the DNS or you want to populate an entry in the Etsy host file. So if you want to put up a static entry in all your remote servers in the Etsy host file, I can use host resource type. This is very interesting. So I will just do it here in this cleanup. Same file or I can create another one. Say host.pp. So I write here host and then you need to specify which machine you want to do it. So practically you will be having uh, or what uh, like entry you, you want to have. So I gave some server.example.com see here sorry and then I say ensure present. And then I say IP address can be anything, so 192.168.0.1, anything. And target. And here I specify Etsy host. That's all. So if I show you my Etsy host right now, it doesn't have an entry of some server this some server.example.com so if i run it puppet apply host.pp you will find an entry coming up in the etsy host file so in this manner you will be able to populate the etsy host file and if if you want the nickname then it's always recommended to use puppet describe host and you will find an alias coming up here there is an attribute there, host aliases. So if I write host aliases, let me do it for you. Just simply copy it. You just need to play smart. And here I paste it and I say some server, anything. Now see what will happen. I save and come out. I apply this. And if I show you the Etsy host now, sorry, this some server, the nickname is also coming up. So host resource type can be very handy if you want to populate some static entries in all the remote servers. So normally what we do, we need to copy the complete file, source file. So if there is a change in the config file, so you need to push the whole complete source file, though the change might be of one line or a or couple of lines, but again the hundred lines will go. So sometimes you don't want the complete file to be overwritten. So we have a tool here, AgOS, which aims to simplify working with the different config files and it will be easier 
to change the files. I'll show you a simple example. If I open my Etsy ctl.com file, I hope all of you will be aware of this file. I don't have any entry here. So I'll just copy this. The system default settings are in this file. No problem. So I can just try to get the things from here. I do a copy. Let's see. Let me first see what exactly is in here. Yeah. So this is a file here. Sysctl.com. I'll just copy it. To my Etsy sysctl.com. So now I have this file. Suppose I want to change certain parameter here. Say this parameter I, I want to change. So one way is that I can write a complete file and then source it. Right? The way we had done for HTTP. Another is I can use Agua's resource type. I copy this particular or locate the particular attribute that you want to use. So I will use the host one. Just use it. So I use a Agua's resource type. Agua's say small change. Anything. Comment or title can be anything. Context. Context means the file. So it should always start with files. And then your Etsy sysctl.com. The path will always start with files and then the absolute path. sysctl.com. And then I say changes. I put a bracket here. It's a set. Paste this value to 1. That means I want to change this. So instead of doing a source and copying the complete file, remember the class where we had done the Apache configuration file change. So we have to modify the file which is in my home directory and then I have to push the file. So if there is a small change, why to overwrite the complete file? It might be a huge file. Instead of this, I can try using this. So if I save and come out, let me show you the current sysctl.conf. That's fine. All the values are zero. Now let me apply this. I've done it in host, I presume. Let me check. Yeah, hosts. So I give puppet apply host.pp. See, it has executed successfully. That means if I view this file, it is one. So I need not to overwrite the complete file or source the complete file. If you know the attribute and the values, it just simply works on parameter value, parameter value. So after set, I'll just op open it for you. After the set, it is the parameter and then a space and then the value. So need not to copy the complete file using the file resource type. If you, if you have got a huge file and there's a small change or a couple of changes, you can safely use Agua's resource type. So I hope you find it very interesting. And this is for this session. Thank you very much. And in next session, we will be coming on to our uh, client server architecture because we had learned basics of the DSL. We were able to create the files. Even we had configured the whole server like Apache. So now it's a time to put it in a client server architecture that we'll be doing from the next session. Thank you.